all the young dudes by Miss King Bean 89. Chapter 45, third year. Noble and most ancient. <laughs> Got everything but cold fire. You will be my rest and peace, child. I know got to take a place near you. So tired, it's the sky that makes you feel tried. It's a trick to make you see wide. It can all but break your heart. Saturday, 15th, September, 1973. Serious? Nothing. Serious? Silence. Oh, for the love of... Serious or Ryan Black the Third? I know you're in there. James hammered on the door. Piss off, Potter. James stepped back from the bathroom door and sat on his bed, looking dejected. Serious had not joined them for dinner and had been locked in the bathroom now for two hours without making a sound. Leave him alone, Remus said, turning the page of his book. He lay belly down on his own bed, pretending he wasn't at all concerned. He'll come out when he's ready. That was something they'd often heard matrons say. At least once a week, one of the St Edmunds boys, usually a new kid, had a tantrum and locked himself in a room or crawled into some small space so no one could reach him. The response from the staff was always the same. Ignore it until he realises that no one cares. Until he realises that nothing he can do will make a difference. It always worked. Rumours knew this first hand. It's not like him, James said, obviously disregarding Remus's draconian tactic. I could kill Snape, you know, for saying that stuff, Remus shrugged. Black really hates his family, though. Don't know why he let Snivellis bother him about it. James stared at Remus, dumbfounded, as if he had just said something unimaginably cruel. To still his family, Mooney. The are above him. Doesn't mean he doesn't care what they think, James sighed. Look, Lupin, maybe you'd better go before he comes out. Go and find Pete in the library or something. I'm sorry it's his friend too, Remus sat up indignantly. Yeah, yeah, of course you are, James said. But, well... If he's been crying, I think he'd rather no one else saw. I don't care if he's crying, I want to help. This was a bit of a lie. Remus had always felt uncomfortable around crying people. He never knew what to do with himself, but he always did want to help, too. And he always tried to help. More than ever, Remus wanted to come clean about having prompted Narcissa into the unbreakable vow, just to see James's face. But he calmed himself. It wasn't a competition. And even if it was, it wasn't one he could win. Okay, James said. But you have to be understanding about it. You can't start a fight. What are you talking about? Remus was mortally offended. He never started fights. You two, you're always bickering, I swear. We do not bicker, Remus snapped. James just raised his eyebrows, which was infuriating. The dark-haired boy hopped off the bed once more and went back to the bathroom door. Sirius, he knocked. Please come out and talk to us. Get lost, pa. Leave me alone. James sighed again. Remus, annoyed with James, now just as much he was annoyed with Sirius, got up too and strode over to the door, indicating for James to move. He rapped hard on the wood himself. Said, piss off. Sirius, it's me, Remus said, his voice hard and cold like Matron's. Look, if you're just going to mope about... Then at least let us in so we can start planning our revenge. Silence. Remus tutted. Fine, sulk. But you're being a selfish git, you know. You're not the only one whose family hates you. Remus! James exclaimed, scandalised. Remus shrugged. It was worth a try. There was a shuffling noise inside the bathroom. Remus pressed his ear to the door, then reeled back as it opened. Sarissa's gloomy face peered out. Finally! James said. Look, come out and... Mooney can come in, Sirius said, opening the door just wide enough for Remus to squeeze inside, then slamming it back to fix the lock. It was dark inside. Lumos, Remus muttered, his one point lit up, casting a pale glow over the small white room. 
and Sirius's pale face. He had been crying. His eyes were dark and red. Remus looked away quickly, glanced up at the light fins. The bubbles were smashed. He tooted. You and your temper, eh? He said. Repero. The lights mended and flickered back on. Remus extinguished his one light. Didn't do it on purpose, Suri sniffed, wiping his nose with the back of his hand. It was a sullen, childish gesture, somehow inappropriate for Sirius, who was, even at thirteen, usually the epitome of grace and poise. I'm still smashed up sometimes when I'm angry. My magic gets out of whack. Oh, right, Rumus nodded, though he'd never heard of that before. So, revenge? Sirius asked sitting down on the toilet lid and looking at Remus expectantly. Revenge, Remus agreed. What do you want to do to him? Not just him, Sirius glowered. All of them. Every single sliverin in the school. Remus nodded enthusiastically. It sounded a bit bonkers, but it was a start. There would be time to talk him down later, when he was acting less weird and wasn't in danger of blowing up any more light bulbs. Yeah, we'll get more black. Now come on. Let's go and I'm not coming out yet, Suri said, sulkily, crossing his arms. Remus sighed. He sat on the floor, leaning against the door. Okay, fine. Wanna talk about it? Because James is probably the best person to Did you mean what you just said? Sirius interrupted him. Do you think my family hates me? Oh god, I dunno, do I? Not exactly in a thought on families. Remus rubbed the back of his head. I was just trying to get you to open the door, to be honest. He meant it as a joke, but Sirius didn't smile. He looked down at Remus through a curtain of dark air. You said your family hates you. Well, I suppose they must have, Remus explained. Otherwise, they wouldn't... Well, I wouldn't have been sent to St. Edmunds, would I? Doesn't mean they hated you. No, Remus reflected. But I don't think they could have liked me very much all the same. You're not... I um, mean, it doesn't bother you? Remus shrugged. Sometimes, obviously. But, you know, no one's entitled to a happy life. Matron had said that many times. For the first time, saying that loud, Remus wondered if she was entirely right. Blimey, Lupin, you're a right downer, you know that? You let me in! Remus kicked Siri slightly on the shin with the toe of his trainer. If you aren't cheering up, then I'll get Potter. Nah, Siri shrugged, smiling weakly. You're okay, Remus laughed. James didn't want me to come in. Said we just bicker. He what? Siri shook his head. We do not bicker. That's what I said, Remus assured him. My family, Siri said suddenly. I don't think they hate me. I think they want to like me, really. But I keep letting everyone down. It's funny most of the time, but... Well, it isn't today. Remus didn't know what to say to that, so he kept quiet. He thought about Narcissa, vowing to face death if she could not marry Lucius. He thought about Regulus, who often stared at his older brother across the dying hall, green-eyed with jealousy. Families were messy business. Perhaps he ought to be grateful to Lyle Lupin for ending it all in one fell swoop so that Remus never had to know whether or not he would have made his father proud, or whether he would have ended up with disappointment after all. Friday, 5th October, 1973. I've got it. I've really got it this time. That's nice, Pete, Remus replied blithely, reading his arithmancy textbook. We should dye his robes pink. You just dye them back. It's too simple. Where would he even get his robes from? Remus turned the page, resuming reading. Ouch, bloody hell, there's something wrong with that bludger, Siri shouted, standing up. Come on, McKinnon, move your blooming arse. Do you mind leaving a arse out of it? Murray snapped from a few rows up. They were watching the Gryffindor Quidditch practice. Well, Sirius, Peter and Mary were. Rumours had just wanted to get on with his reading. Jealous, MacDonald? Sirius replied cheekily. Die as hair pink, then, Peter persisted, shaking Remus' arm for attention. I've learnt colour changing spells now. I could do it. So can he, Remus said, joking his arm back and searching for his place on the page. You know, Mooney, you could show a bit more interest. In Quidditch or taking down your arch nemesis? Both. 
either. I'm here, R and I. Remus turned another page. Who's your arch nemesis? Murray asked, getting up and coming down to sit beside Sirius. If I told you I'd have to kill you, Sirius said dryly. Mary rolled her eyes. Is it Snape? All three boys looked at Mary in surprise. She laughed. Come on, you lot. It's not exactly a secret. We've all had it in for each other since the first year. Plus, Lily's one of my best friends. Ugh, don't talk to me about Evans, Sirius groaned. I hear enough as it is. I think she's an idiot going around for that creep, Mary said, rubbing her arms as if the thought of Severus just made her skin crawl. You know he made Marlene cry the other day? Called her dad something really nasty. Makes no sense either, because Lily says he's half-blood. Severus. Anyway, someone needs to teach him a lesson. Ha! Huh, Severus sparked. He's half-blood. Brilliant. Yeah, Mary said coolly. So is Remus, and I'm a muggle-born. So what? Remus finally looked up from his book to smoke at Sirius, raising an eyebrow at him. Sirius looked down, and then back at Quidditch. Nothing, he muttered. Not like that. Good, Mary said primly. Get enough of that shit from the Slytherins. Remus was inclined to agree with Mary, who had more backbone than he did, putting Sirius in his place like that. Insults from the Slytherins had definitely increased this term, though it might have only been noticeable to the non-pure blood students. Remus had started to worry about travelling between classes by himself, though he rarely had to. He had a few near misses anyway, and been called a mudblood twice. He didn't tell James or Sirius this. It seemed a bit like whining. Plus, as far as insults went, he felt like he'd been called worse than mudblood. He didn't like the idea that it made Marlene cry, though. It was all very well that Remus got picked on by Snape and Mulciber, or even puny, sadistic little Barty Crouch. But making girls cry was another thing altogether. Remus felt a surge of protectiveness and chivalry towards his friend. He clenched his fists and then unclenched them. The problem was that Snape wasn't the type to attack with extras and big pranks. He could do both of those things. He was every bit as able as the marauders. But Snape relied on words to hurt people, and they were much trickier to counteract. Unless you change the words. Oh, Remus put his book down. Suddenly, he grabbed Sirius's arm. Oh! What? Sirius frowned at him. He'd been absorbed in watching training while Remus's mind had wandered. There had been another opportunity for Sirius to join the Quidditch team this year, but he had declined. Maybe because he had changed his mind. Maybe because he didn't want to be embarrassed and try it again. We change the words, Remus gabbled. We change what he says. What are you on about? Sirius clucked his tongue. Snivellous? Yeah, there's spells that you can do to stop someone speaking, right? Sirius coloured slightly, looking at Remus. Yeah, he said cautiously. Okay, so how much more difficult can it be to, like, twist their words? We could set a trigger word, or a few. Mudblood, a blood traitor, or a half-breed, dung liquor, whatever. And instead, we make them say something really nice, or something stupid. Whatever we feel like. Mooney, where did you hear all those? James scored a goal and Peter leapt up, clapping wildly. Potter did a few loops on his broom, showing off. Sirius grinned up at his friend. Mary's knee was touching Sirius's. Remus noticed. They were sitting really close, actually. So? Remus grabbed Sirius's shoulder, again trying to get him to focus. What do you think? I love it, Sirius said simply. We should make him say something more ridiculous, like, I don't know, snuggle bunnies or something. We can go to the library after this, yeah. Can I come? Mary asked. Sirius shrugged. If you want, I suppose. It's serious marauder's business, though. Mary giggled. Remus wondered if Sirius found that annoying as he did. He picked up his book and returned to Arithmancy. Twenty minutes later, the training session was over and the marauders were walking towards the castle. Mary and Marlene in tow, Sirius and Remus both babbling excitedly to James about their brilliant plan. It had somehow become their plan in Sirius's mind. You're supposed to be off the pitch by five o'clock, someone grunted in front of them. Remus looked up to see the Slytherin Quidditch team walking towards them, brooms in hand, kits slung over the shoulders. 
We're leaving now, Bulstrode. Bloody hell, James said annoyed. The pug-faced slivering captain just held and scowled at him and pushed past, deliberately knocking James with his shoulder as he did so. Oi, Sirius pulled out his wand. James held him back. What's it to you, Black? Bulstrode sneered. That's even still your name. The Slytherins all laughed, including their smallest, newest member, who had been behind all the others. Regulus Black. It took James and Remus to pull Sirius away as the Slytherins stickered and whispered. Remember the plan, Remus whispered. Sirius slackened and then nodded. Promise me we'll get all of them, he growled.